Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And you know, we're a couple in love, a married couple in love. And we just did a hundred favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe characters. So we're doing our 25 top favorite DC Extended Universe characters. We didn't have a set of guidelines. It was just sort of gut instinct, gut reaction. How do we respond to these characters as they were portrayed in the films of the DCEU? Without further ado, to kick us off, I am going to start with our number 25, and that is Jonathan Kent. Obviously, this is Clark Kent's adopted father. Um, he was played by Kevin Costner, and Kevin Costner did a great yes. job with this character. He brought some real heart to it, but he also had a good edge of being a guide, a teacher, while also maintaining some authoritarian as a parent, so he wasn't all buddy-buddy. I mean, I really felt like he fit the part well. Yeah, whatever happened to Kevin Costner? Like, I mean, I know he's gotten older, so there's a little bit less parts f for him as, as a leading man, but still, I feel like, you know, like Robert De Niro is still out there, you know, make, making movies and whatnot. But Kevin Costner, I, I don't, see, don't see a lot of him. Like, is, was Waterworld that bad that his career just completely <laughs> got taken No, because he had good movies after yeah. Waterworld. He's a charismatic guy. Basically, yeah. we'd like to see more of him. Exactly. Number 24 is Joker. This is going to be a controversial one because a lot of people did not like the Joker. They hated the Joker in Suicide Squad, so we're to have him. But in the same sense, Joker's such a, a big character in, you know, the DC franchise that to not, not have him even in, like, the top 10, top 5 is, you know, says how, how bad this kind of Joker <laughs> was. I, I didn't really buy into, believe, or enjoy most of the content that mm. was available. However... His one scene with Harley Quinn yeah. and Suicide Squad, when they are in the club, and he's telling that guy, you know, like, do you want a banger? You can bang her. <laughs> that's what you, that's what you like. That's the no. But there was just that scene, the way it was delivered, <laughs> to see Harley and the Joker working off of each other. Mm -hmm. It it was so creepy, but it was also so delicious to really see those two in action. And I think that was the one scene for me that nailed it. Number twenty three. The Huntress. She's got a wicked cool backstory. Yeah. And at the end of the film, she becomes really, really impressive. And so, funny. And funny, yes. And thank God for some humor. She's probably not yeah. as high on this list as she deserves to be because those final scenes in that film and her backstory, like, skyrocketed her. Number 22 is Feora. Who? Who's this? <laughs> this is actually one of the side characters that DC did really well. Um, she is the evil right-hand woman of uh, General Zod in Man of Steel, which is the first DCEU movie. And she just did such a great job about being an evil bitch. <laughs> I was wondering if you were gonna go for it. I'm like, if he says it, I can say it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I knew, you said it before, so it kind of gave me license to say it, you know? <laughs> that's, that, that's why I thought it was okay. She is the female that you love to hate. Mm -hmm. And there is something so delicious about those female characters. I, I, I don't know why, because none of us like them in real life. <laughs> but there's just something so entertaining about them on screen, and especially when you get to see them getting their butts kicked. It evokes an emotional response, and that's what you want out of a character. You want them to kind of affect you some way emotionally. Which brings us to number 21, other end of the spectrum, totally non-bitch, is Martha <laughs> Kent. She is played by Diane Lane, who does mm -hmm. a wonderful job. As there always. is a, a true heart to this woman. There's a wholesomeness to this woman. Mm -hmm. There's a mama bear to this woman, because we see exactly how much she cares about Clark and doesn't want anybody messing with her son as any mother I think would yeah. but I, it's delicious to see a little bit of that mama bear edge to Martha because in in most stories of Superman you know the Kents are saintly. Number 20 is Rick Flagg. What I like about Rick Flagg is he's got uh, he's the badass with the, the like but still has the sensitive side you know I mean because he, st <laughs> he still he still cares for uh Dr. Moon and is, it loves her and is willing to do anything for her, you know, risk his life for her, and you know that's what you know all us chivalrous men like to think that we would we would do that same thing. Only I am not as badass as Rick Flag is. Rick Flag is human. Yes, he's a military man and he's following his code and he's doing his job, but he's not devoid of humanity. I mean, yeah. he cares about his girlfriend. He's able to get a rapport with Deadshot because of the fact that he recognizes the humanity in Deadshot, an assassin. Number nineteen is Renee Montoya. For me, what I loved about her was that she was a a tough broad, yeah. I think is, is the right kind of descriptive term for her. She brought some humor. She had an edge. She was a complicated character. I love her standing up against the men. 
and she was a, and she was a, uh, a real character in the sense that she doesn't have any superpowers or anything like that. And I know it's something that, she, that that she really liked when people that don't have superpowers are going up against these people that kind of are a little bit more enhanced or or, or special. And I also loved the idea that they had of of Rosie being the woman in a man's world and seeing all the obstacles that she went up against because of that. She had demons to battle in it. She was yeah. kind of a joke. She was having a hard time in her in her unit, and yet. All the while, she was on the right track. So I just found that a little bit more of a delicious, probably more accurate portrayal than what we usually see in film. Number 18, another character in Birds of Prey, Black Mask. This was uh, one of, maybe maybe their best villain, uh, I think, in the DC Extended Universe. He was effectively creepy and just an eccentric character. And anytime you're like, you know, you have a character that's peeling off other people's faces. Uh, Ewan McGregor is not a character who I ever would have considered for a superhero villain. Uh, mm. He just seems to have a little more of a, a wholesomeness, yeah. a sweet guy. I mean, I think of him in like Moulin Rouge. So I think that's what makes it so creepy is like when you have someone that doesn't look look like a you know sociopath and, and a psychopath, but then they're able to pull it off. It just makes it so much more effective because you know when you talk about someone. Uh, that's that's nice and wholesome. Usually they have like kind eyes and a sweet face, but when that is perpetuating these horrific acts, it's just that much more disturbing. All right, so next up is number 17, Hippolyta. You might be wondering who this is if you're not familiar with all of the characters in the Wonder Woman universe, <laughs> uh, because they do have some names that are kind of hard to remember, but this is actually Wonder Woman's mom. She, for us, was so regal yeah. and I mean, a mother through and through, because she definitely wanted to protect Diana. She definitely wanted to secure her and keep her safe, as any mother would. But eventually, she does respect the fact that there's just not going to be any stopping Diana. I mean, she's going to do what she's going to do. And at the end of the day, she's yeah. kind of amazing. Last one on our list for this video is number 16, Darla Dudley. Oh. She is the cute kid of the DCEU. She, she wins the award for her top cute kid. Darla steals our hearts, and she is so sweet and adorable. And really, I mean, yeah, that's, that, that earns you status in our, in our favorites list. She also brings humor yep. in a movie that already had humor, so didn't necessarily need it. So when you get struck by lightning, does it hurt? Pinkies up. If it had been maybe han handled by a less capable young actress, it might have fallen flat or seemed pushed or seemed like too much. But this girl just knows her essence. Let us know what you thought about these characters that we uh, listed in this video. If you think they should be higher, if they think they should be lower, you know, just leave them completely out of this video. Let us know down below in the comments. We respond to all comments and we love to hear from you. You've now heard our top 25 to 16 characters in the DC Extended Universe. But... They are definitely not definitive.